The engines had a wonderful time visiting the children in the big city far away. But it was soon time to go home, except for Thomas, who had been so popular that he was asked to stay one more day, to which he happily agreed. Thomas said goodbye to the others as they began their journey home. Annie and Clarabelle hated to leave Thomas behind. Don't worry, he smiled warmly. When I return, I'll take you on a nice long run. I promise. Thomas retired to the shed where he and the other engines had been staying. It was now empty and Thomas began to feel a little lonely. No matter, he said, tomorrow, I'll spend the whole day with the children and then I'll be on my way home. The next day was a whirlwind with dozens of happy children clambering up and down his footplate. This is wonderful, he told his driver and fireman. I love the big city. I could see why so many engines like to call this place home. I would love to live here too. But then, Thomas had a saw it. Say, I haven't seen another steam engine since arriving here. I wonder where they are. His driver and fireman traded nervous glances. Don't worry about that, Thomas. Just enjoy your time with the children. Before Thomas knew it, the day was over and it was time to go home. As Thomas made his way down the line, the weather changed. Dark clouds loomed overhead, and a thick fog began to settle. Thomas was finding it hard to see. The signal man was having difficulty too, and sent Thomas down a different line by accident. Soon Thomas found himself in very unfamiliar surroundings. He could not be sure, but he felt as if he was being watched. Up ahead, they could see the outline of a sign through the fog. As they approached, it read, Diesels park here. D -d Diesels? Thomas spluttered. Then the fog began to lift and Thomas saw only trucks scattered amongst the yard. Phew, he sighed in relief. It's only the machinery. Suddenly, a large diesel sped by him on the next line, blaring its horn. Another diesel thundered by in the opposite direction, blowing exhaust in Thomas's face. Thomas jumped, and without thinking, he darted forward, leaving the yard as fast as he could. On all sides of him, he could hear the growls and snarls of the diesels. His driver regained control when the yard abruptly thinned out and they found themselves in a row of dark sidings where no diesels could be found. Thomas saw the outline of a steam engine and gained confidence. Hello, he said. Could you help us? We need to find our way back to the main line. But the engine didn't reply. Thomas tried again. He hello It began to dawn on Thomas why the engine wasn't speaking. As he looked around, he saw other engines too, sitting motionless, rusted from smoke box to cab with scrap, written in broad white chalk letters along their boilers, which made Thomas feel very, very sad. Oh dear, he said, I've heard the stories, but I didn't think they were true. His driver and fireman clambered down and inspected. 
Now you see why you haven't met other steam engines, Thomas, they said. The truth is that there aren't many left. Thomas's heart sank. You are lucky to work on Sodor, Thomas, said his fireman. There, you don't have to worry about being scrapped. Sir Topham Hat will not allow it. But, added his driver, over here it is a different sort of place. I don't think I would want to live in the big city after all, said Thomas sadly. I want to go home. Soon, they found their way back to the main line and were on their way home again. Thomas was a little engine with big aspirations, but he was happy to work on his little island where he didn't have to worry about whether he'd still be in service the next day or not. He only wished there was a way he could help other engines find their way to better homes too.